Peace and love, everybody. Yeah, my name is Ringo, and I play drums. I want to thank Paul for all those great things he told us. Some of them were true. Uh, you know, it's a great honor to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I was doing the press and all saying, well, why did you wait so long? It had nothing to do with me. You have to be invited. But anyway, finally, I'm invited, and I love it. I also love that I got lucky that it's actually in Cleveland. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. When I started playing, I was playing in skiffle bands, the sort of house party bands. And, um, you know, we had a, a guitarist called Eddie Clayton, the first band I was in, who was really great. I had a snare drum, and uh, Roy, the bass player, had a T-chess bass with a, a pole in it and a string. And we had, the, thanks to Lonnie Donegan, there's the hidden clue. Uh, he brought Skiffle to England. Lonnie Donegan! <laughs> and uh, so we were playing this sort of Skiffle music, playing anywhere we could. And then, you know, I joined a couple of other bands. You know, I always wanted to play with great players, and I kept moving up a little, a little, moving up to the next band. Um, of course, you know, I did. Uh, I did end up with Rory Storm and the Hurricanes, who were, we were, when I joined them, we were still a bit of a, a country folk band, and the guitarist in those days, this is a nice one for all you big shot guitarists with your big amps, we played the Cavern Club, which was a jazz club in Liverpool, and he brought a radio to plug into so we'd be electric. <laughs> you know, and we got thrown off. Get out of here, that's not, jazz. Anyway, you know, we started off with a radio, the first amp we had. Anyway, things got going a lot better, and uh, we ended up playing a lot in Liverpool, and a lot around Liverpool. We never really made it anywhere else. But while that was going on, I was working in a factory. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. After the things I've sat through tonight, Blah, blah, blah. I got some stories. Anyway. <laughs> I was working in a factory and playing at night, and every Sunday, you know, we lived in England, we only had the BBC, but out of madness, there was a small country in Europe called Luxembourg. Near Switzerland, near France, near all those countries. A very small, population about six. And uh, for some reason, they had the biggest radio mast. And they bought the Alan Freed Rock and Roll Show. Which came from here. And so the first time I heard, well, I have to backtrack, you know, in the round about 55, Bill Haley was my hero. He was like the first rock. Elvis came in, he was like your dad. I mean, Bill was like your dad compared to, but anyway, I'm listening to this guy on a Sunday at four o'clock in the afternoon, and I hear Little Richard, first time ever. I hear Jerry Lee Lewis, who was here tonight. First time ever. I heard rock and roll music because we weren't getting a lot of that stuff in England. And it came from this very small country. So at four o'clock every Sunday, Roy and I, we would go to his house and we'd turn on the radio and Alan Freed would introduce us to so many great rap records and acts. 
You know, and the one incredible thing, because, you know, I was a, a teenager uh, once, and uh, <laughs> he played Little Richard, and Little Richard said, shag on down to the Union Hall. Means nothing to you, to us. It's very meaningful. <laughs> and we couldn't believe we could hear this guy on record, shag on down to the Union Hall. You go, oh, oh my God, wow. Now that seems a good place to go. <laughs> and so that's, you know, my rock and roll land. Also, I came from a port, a lot of sailors came, you know, to Liverpool, from Liverpool. We'd bring music from New York, from all over America. Uh, they'd drink all the money, they'd sell the records. So I got a gr <laughs> Am I holding you up? <laughs> anyway, I started collecting a lot of records, listening to music, music. Anyway, ended up in this rock and roll band. And, you know, with Rory and the Hurricanes, and we did go to Germany, and that's where I met, you know, the Beatles. I met Paul. John, God bless you. George, God bless you. And uh, we got to know each other, and then I came back to Liverpool, and there was a knock on my door that the drummer wasn't well, and would I sit in? Sure. Anyway, you know, I, I was living that life then. I was out the factory, and I didn't have to get up till noon. So that was good. And so I went and played a lunchtime session with uh, George, John, and Paul, and we had a great time. And then I went and showed them some clubs in England or in Liverpool they would not have known of. And I'm sort of part of their downfall. <laughs> and, you know, we. We became friends, we hung out, and then I would go back to Rory and then come back and play with the Beatles, you know, when the other drummer couldn't make it. And then I got a call, I was, we were playing a holiday camp in England, three month gig, couldn't believe how great that was, you know, like $24 a week. It was like, woo! And, uh, and I got a call from Brian Epstein, and uh, he said, yeah, let's hear it for Brian. And I got a call to say, would I join the group? This was Wednesday, would I join the Beatles? And I, and I said, well, when do you want me to join? And he said, tonight. I said, no, I can't do that. I've got a band here, we're working, we've got a job. I'll come Saturday. <laughs> because everybody in Liverpool were all playing the same song, so they picked up a drum and he could play. And that's when this journey started. And it's been a, an incredible journey for me. Uh, you know, with these three guys who wrote these songs, and we were talking just the other night. Uh, you know, Paul had come in, strummed some song to us, and we just, that's the first we'd heard of it, and we'd play it. And we would get it done in a really good shape in an hour and a half, it would be the record. You know, we didn't spend a lot of time. And there was a lot of joy, and he's talking about, we all, the Beatles, you know, they were so big and so famous, but they shared rooms. You know, every hotel, when we got in hotels, when he's talking about it, we were in guest houses. But when we got to hotels, we always had two rooms. And it didn't matter who was with who, we were pals, and we hung out. And, but I'm telling any band in the room, you really need to get to know your other players, you know. <laughs> you. And another tip I've got for all bands who are starting out, when you're in the van, was another tip. If you fart, own up. Because it, it'll cause hell. Because it'll be like, if you don't own up, everyone's blaming everyone else. So, it, you know, we made a pact in the van. Okay, if we fought, we'll say it was me. Okay. And that's what we did, and that's how we get on so well. I want to tell you, it's been a beautiful night. I mean, hanging out with a lot of musicians. We don't usually do that. Um, you know, I'm going to do a few numbers for you next. I got, I got to tell you, following John Legend and Stevie Wonder, for God's sake. <laughs> and uh, anyway, I'm going to start with a number I've done for since 1960. I did this number. It was a woman's song by the Shirelles, and it just took my fancy. And it's called Boys, so I hope you love it.